Now then, Smash Bros MMA UK, and as always, whenever we want to record this, whether it be one week or we take a few weeks off, we're back in a big way. Uh, usual suspects here, KD, Gijimbo, Slice, and of course, myself, the big dog. Gentlemen, hope you're keeping well. Since we uh, neglected to do anything last week, we've got quite a lot to discuss today. Um, so we'll just get straight into it with some news. Been quite a lot going on. Uh, kind of the most prevalent bit of news, I think, over the last couple of days, last week or so. Um, is that April the 17th, two mega fights have been announced for that date, with the first being Robert Whitaker against Paolo Costa. Humongous fight. Humongous fight for the heavyweight. Not the heavyweights, the middleweights. Although if you tell me Paolo Costa was a heavyweight, I'd believe you. K Diggy, what do you make of this fight? We've discussed it before, but now that it's official, we've got a bit more time to fester on it, a bit more time to think about the outcome. It's a bloody beauty, mate. I, I love it. It's it's the it's the it's the division. It's the fight which needs to happen in the division, with Israel flirting with the light heavyweight division. Uh, these two are the are obviously the two guys who have fought in most recently. Yeah, I think unless where where did we yeah, was Romero was Romero bet, was Romero after or before? Yeah, yeah Romero was between them. He was. Uh, you've got a Robert a Robert Paolo Sani with Yoel in the middle. Yeah, well, it's a very forgettable Romero fight in the middle there. So the well, yeah, the, the two fights which, which where where you thought Israel could have been knocked off his perch for me, um, in prior to the fight was the was the before the Costa and before the Whitaker fight, and these guys are the mainstays in the division who who have just torn through the division prior to getting to Israel. So it does make sense for these two to fight. Um, and just and let's let's sort of rebuild this middleweight division. And once Israel gets back, let's give him a, a contender to to fight. And uh, it's, it is a very exciting fight. You're right. Yeah. So it's fight night card, main event, five round fight. Rumors circulating, Jimbo. There's been talks that this fight should be for an interim title. With Izzy making the move up to light heavyweight and taking on Jan in March. What are your thoughts on the potential of an interim belt being put into the fold? I think they will put an interim belt into the fold if Izzy beats Jan. If he doesn't, I don't think they'll put a title on the line. If he does, I think there's a possibility that they'll throw a interim title up there. And uh, I, we know we know Roberts happy to fight for interim. I'm sure Paolo is as well. Um, I would. Uh, I'm never really a big fan of throwing interim titles in there for, for this, no reason. But if the champion has moved up a weight class and isn't looking like to return, I'm perfectly happy with an interim title. I'm happy with them to defend the interim title um, until the until the person either decides to vacate or come back to that division to defend it themselves. Um, in a way, I think really we're going to wait until we see what the result of Jan versus Izzy is going to be. Yeah. Which um, I think has officially, officially been announced for March, hasn't it? Start of March. March second rings a bell. If I'm being honest with you, I can't remember the exact date, but it doesn't it doesn't sing that far away. Uh, and I was just thinking about you saying that Jan's going up to fight Izzy, and I was there thinking, oh yeah, um, I, I don't know who's going to win this. I actually back Jan, and I was checking my pound for pound picks because I've actually put Izzy in second and then Jan at uh, about ten for eleven. So my my list's fucked, boys. Why <laughs> it ain't going to happen <laughs> because of this fight being booked unless they draw, which I'm I'm praying on. But yeah, I think. Off, off the tangent now, uh, Whitaker Costa, we've talked about it before and I still think it's a great fight. I think it's a beautiful main event for a fight night card. I think the five rounds is going to really assist Whitaker in this fight. And for me, the, the, the blueprints there of how to beat him, Izzy came out there, completely just startled him in his tracks. And I think Whitaker has the potential to do the same. Uh, I think whilst the fight lasts, it's going to be an absolute barn burn and an absolute beauty. Other fight announced for April 17th, not UFC, not Bellator, not PFL. Not, it's not an MMA match, but it involves an MMA fighter. Ben Askren is making the leap to boxing and taking on Jake Paul. April 17th, eight rounds. Who are you backing, Jimbo Slice? Um, I am backing Jake Paul. Um, I, 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 know that seems, I know that seems horrendous to say, but look, I was just watching some video, like a GIF of Ben Askren doing this. Like shadow boxing, and like genuinely, I think I can punch better than Ben Askren can. This is a man who got out kickboxed by Damian Meyer, and like Damian Meyer is makes no 
no issue saying, like, I do not train with that. I train for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I am that man. And Ben Askren, I think, would be the stronger man. But also, Ben Askren has a hip replacement. Um, he's twice his age. and Well, not, not twice his age, but he's a lot older. And he's not been training in striking for, really, he has trained in striking. We're not the same level of striking. His tactic was always getting down, holding down, ground and pound a bit, win by a decision. Jake Paul has been training boxing for a few years now and has the fundamentals down fairly well. He's better than his brother. He's better than KSI. He's the, definitely the best YouTube person who's done boxing. I'll say that. I don't know about you, K Digger, but now I've got in my mind. You know, let, let's let's scrap Jake Paul. Let's get him out of the fold. Jimbo Slice versus Ben Askren. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I'll have him. I'll have him, mate. <laughs> that's the I'll fight. That's him, the that'll make the real one. money. I'll have him. <laughs> that's the real one. We'll get three that's the fact that I want to watch Best Rose MMA UK and all of uh, all of Ben Askren's what's two million trailer? Instagram followers. <laughs> you can play for us. You can fight him for a Bitcoin, Jimbo. Um, <laughs> In terms of Jake Paul and K Diggy, uh, I know that you've seen the same video that was put out earlier on of him training with none other than gamebred Jorge Mosvidal. Do you think training with such a elite striker is going to benefit Jake yeah. in this fight? I don't. I don't see why not. Obviously, um, Jorge Mas- Masvidal went to went to knock out Ben Askren early in the fight, but he he had a full camp, um, even though it was um, against a crotch sniffer where he was mainly working on takedown defence, but he would have been working on his hands as well. Um, it, it's, it's always going to benefit anyone to have someone of um, Masvidal's uh, stature working with you um, and to, to who's, who's shared the octagon with um, Ben Askren. What I would say as well is, yeah, Jake, Jake the Pauls have got enough money to hire the, the best and the rest to get them in the best shape of their life to get them to have the power to have the technique to beat um to beat Ben Askren. So I'm I'm in um, Jimbo Slice's uh, same position as well. I'm saying that JP is going to get the win. I I'm inclined to agree with you. I mean I'd love Ben Askren to win because it does me not into the Jake Paul brew. It annoys me that everybody's calling them out and it's like your route, yeah, it's, it's a bit of fun. It's you know, it's a bit of a circus, a bit of a freak show fight to a point. But I'd love Ben Askren to just go out and absolutely chin him. I think because, like you said, I mean, when I think of Ben Askren, I think of his laughable striker against Damian Meyer uh, in their match, and it were a joke, it were an absolute scandal, absolutely terrible. Got lit up on the feet Maybe by then. Damian. Who, who the fuck gets lit up on the feet by Damian Meyer? Ben Askren, that's who does, you know what I'm saying? Um. It's Jake Paul's fight to lose, really, isn't it? He's going to put the work in. Ben Askren, he's putting out some clips of him moving his feet, you know, chucking some medicine balls about, but I ain't seen none of that hand movement yet. And until we see something, my money is on the Paul brother. So we're going to take it back a week. We're rewinding to April the 10th. Another big middleweight clash in the UFC. Darren Till taking on Marvin Vittori. The European fight for the top European middleweight fighter. Since that clown Jack Manson got beaten by Marvin Vittori and uh, was taken out of the uh, that picture, what do you think Dan and Till's path to victory is here, okay, Diggy? It's hard to say, really. Vittori's he looks so well polished against Manson. He looks strong. He looked like he, he went he went the whole whole five rounds with no issues. He he and it was on short notice as well. The fight he looked it was a very very Good fight from Marlon Vittori, but Till Till's got a vast experience, not just in the UFC, but prior to that in his kickboxing and and all the rest of it. He's he he should it will be a brawl this fight, and it's hard to I do I'm always with the countryman, I'm always with Till, but bald Vittori does scare me a lot. See the thing for me with this fight, I I don't think Vittori is going to keep this on the feet. He's shown in previous fights when he fought Israel Adesanya that he has got that ground game, that takedown, that wrestling element to his full repertoire of skills. And I think he's going to have to rely on that massively uh, for Darren Till. I don't know the reach off the top of my head, so I'm just going to have a quick nosy now because I, I think Darren Till's quite a long fighter. Uh, I'm just going to check how long Marvin Vittori is uh, reach-wise. So Marvin Vittori has got a 74-inch reach. Darren Till has got... 
So, or 74 and a half. So it's not that much but of a difference. Punching up, though, isn't it? It'll be punching up. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's very true. I think it's a good fight. I think the path to victory for Vittori is a making it a ground fight, you know, mixing it in, making Darren Till think because he needs to take Darren Till off his game early. If it stays exclusively on the feet, I think it's Tills to lose. My concern is that Vittori is going to fall in love with his striking a bit, as all grapplers do, um, after his commanding performance against Hamanson and not implement his full game. Jimbo Slice, what's your thoughts on this one? Um, I think, in a way, people forget how good of a striker Darren Till is because he if he's, if he's lacklustre. Not I enjoyed his last fight, to be honest, but his lacklustre last three fights. I, some people didn't really like the, the, the Whitaker fight. I thought it was a great fight. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it personally, especially the first two rounds. Um, and his tentative performance against Gastelum and even his performance away against Stephen Thompson. People forget how good he is. People forget how strong he is on the feet. Um, I do think, though, I agree. I think that Vittori has the ability just to take him down and try and hold, try and hold him down. Uh, if this goes up, I believe, I think on the feet, this is going to be Till's fight to lose, as you say. But I'm also a big fan of, of Till. I know he was originally a, a welterweight. I'm a big fan of him thinking, go up there, take him a light heavyweights. A few bit, a bit less grapplers because I think that's where that's where Whitaker's issue is. I think not Whitaker, sorry, um, Till's issue is. I think he, he struggles with when once he is on the ground. He's got very good takedown defense. But I think he struggles once he is on the ground. So I, I'm personally a big fan of him moving up, but in this fight, I think the light heavyweight. Yeah, you're a mental, mate. You're he, a mental. Got, he got absolutely sparked out by Jorge Masvidal. And- yeah. Compromised by a weight cut, though. It was compromised by a weight cut. They all get get extra power. He he isn't big enough. He might have the he might have the 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 height and the reach at light heavyweight, but he hasn't got the width. If you get what I'm saying, he's not a thick. Yeah, I understand. Like a lot of the the big boys are in that light heavyweight division. Um, But but. Going back to this though, I do think he, he possesses tremendous power even at middleweight still does Darren Till. So I think there's a possibility of Vittori not not feeling power like that before and being a bit shocked because this is really his first fight with the big big boys. And I do hope the countryman wins. Um I'm not certain, but I I also think there was something about Vittori at first with was well, he a COVID denier or something at first, which me a bit often. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting the country to win. I think, I think whenever one of you, being from like the UK where there isn't that many UK fighters that are actually in the UFC that are of a higher caliber, you always back them, don't you? When it comes to fight night, I'll, I'll be all over till I'll be sat there, you know, three lines on my shirt, absolutely loving life, watching him fight, and I'll be loving it. So, a bit of uh, not necessarily breaking news, but news that's come out this this evening. Uh, Raquel Pennington has received a six month suspension from USADA. Um, she claims that she had some medication from doctors for an illness, and it had some some shite in it that she shouldn't be having. So she's alerted the UFC. USADA have come a knocking, and uh, she's pissed hot. Cannot long and short of it. Um, will the uh, women's bantamweight division miss Raquel Pennington for six months? K Diggy. Yeah, probably. Probably, I think it, losing losing any women in any of the divisions is who, who've got a, a half decent name on of them is uh, is always difficult. I think they need as much need as much firepower in there as possible. And and Raquel like had a had a good um, up and coming run into the UFC, and that was probably the height of her uh, height of her powers and height of her fame. But um, if it is if there is a Raquel Pennington fight. She's usually fifth fight down on the main event. So, yeah, I'm guessing yeah. the people who watch the fifth fifth fight down on the main event will be upset. Yeah, <laughs> it's she. I mean, she. I think she's ranked uh, as a bantamweight. You know, she she has fought for the title against Nunes, but she's not a fighter that I'm that interested in. I, the thing I remember Pennington for is her absolutely commanding performance against uh, Misha Tate, Tate, UFC 205, yeah. where she absolutely battered her for 15 minutes. And it was one of the, the best performances going, to be fair. It was 
unplayable, unreal. And, you know, we look back on performances like that. You know, the question I've got for you on this one, Jim, but we'll move on. We ain't got a lot to say about this. Do you believe her that she's the reason she's pissed hot is because she had some medicine from a doctor? Do you want to know something? Don't care. <laughs> Neither do I. Don't know why I don't know why I put this segment in. <laughs> Like, yeah. I, let's be honest, even even in that fight, that 205, that was her impressive floor, was really impressive. Um, and then she got back, beat up for four and a half rounds, four and a half, maybe three and a half, and then, you know, like, by Nunes, after that, and after, just don't care. Yeah, I couldn't care less. From what I remember, her record's pretty geesh, to be fair. Like, it's like 11 and 8. Yeah, it's not, it's, not a great, it's not a great record, you know, to say that she's one of the top players... Um, in that division, and it, to be fair, it's pretty laughable for that division that someone you know of that kind of the loss record is a ranked fighter. Um, so ranked it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while before Pennington makes her comeback. And speaking of comebacks, uh, Mario Yamasaki has announced that he will be returning to refereeing MMA this year. <laughs> Widely regarded as one of the worst referees in mixed martial arts. His, final, his last fight that he kind of officiated, for, I think, was one with Valentina Shevchenko. Shevchenko, okay. Um, absolutely yeah. battered. Yeah, she absolutely battered her. And, you know, come under a lot of fire, a lot of scrutiny. And I think he said, you know, you know, I wanted to give her, you know, that, what, something to do with Warrior. He wanted to give her, like, a Warrior X or something like that. Um, give her a chance to be a Warrior. Yeah, give her a chance. That's it. That's, give her a chance to be a Warrior. Absolute lunatic. Absolute weapon. Uh, within the UFC referee only fight and the question I've got for you AK Diggy Mario Yamasaki Steve Mazzagatti who would you rather have officiating your fight yeah I'd have to go for um, for Steve Mazzagatti but it's, it's it's pick you pick your poison do you want uh, do you want your wor- which worst enemy do you want to sleep with your wife so uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't there's that, that last as well what's that last called the it was absolutely diabolical as well. Kim Winslow. Is she the one that someone was like choked out for like five seconds? She just didn't clock. Uh, she was shite, is what she was. I'm going to check Kim Win. I'm sure it's Kim Winslow. But you kind of got those three as like the worst ever. Yes, Kim Winslow. She was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, do you think Dana White's going to let him back? Do you think he'll be, he'll be officiating UFC fights, Jimbo? Mario, when he returns? Uh no, no. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I, I'll be perfectly honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in Bellator. Uh, I, I don't think they'd have an issue with it. Um, but no, I don't see, I don't see Dana, because like, what, once, he, once he knows he hates people, he hates people. Uh, yeah. I actually saw this news, follow him on a, follow on a Facebook just for a bit of a laugh. Uh, Mario, like I saw him at a barbecue the other day with Mario Yamasaki. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, oh, the barbecue. He was topless as well. It was really, really bizarre. It was barbecues. Is this what you're into? Uh, <laughs> it's not. It was just. I just thought, like, what's he? Or what? Why? Why? Well, yeah, he was. Um, uh, I do think I would rather have Mario Yamasaki myself, mainly just due to this. But um, the love. I think I'd rather have Mario Yamasaki because he's refereed uh, fights that are a bit bigger more recently than Steve. Big Steve. Well, I think Steve's last fight was um, John Fitch won it against Josh Berkman uh, in the WSOF, where he got choked out to John Fitch and he just left him unconscious for about. He, he was choked out for like fifteen seconds, uh, and he was completely that, unconscious oh, that's for what ages. I was that's yeah, what I was so, Jim Winslow probably did do that as well because she was fucking shit and all. Speaking of fucking shit, Tito Ortiz, mayor of Huntington Beach. Uh, it's been was elected three months ago. Uh, Rumours swirling around that there's going to be a vote of no confidence against him. Tito Ortiz, consensus biggest clown of the year every year. Um, <laughs> did he, he fight Alberto Del Rio yet? He did fight Alberto Del Rio. He been, he been, he, yeah, he got overturned. He won and he got overturned didn't it, to something like a. Uh, briefly got overturned something like was it like a, a no it wasn't a no contest but it was like their ver- like a version of it and then it got re-overturned I'm just, I'm just trying to find it out now it was something like 
what was it called? It was like it got turned over to overturn and then got returned back over. It was something like a no, not a no contest, but like no results. They turned, they called it something else. No decision. Yeah. It was an, really I've got it here. Um, on February 26th, it was announced the result had been temporarily overturned to a no decision. Uh, and then on February the 28th, it was announced that TTORTs had consumed muscle relaxers. So the issue was resolved and it was turned back for a win. No, what to say here, other than TTORT is a terrible human being, um, a terrible fighter these days, an absolute joke. I still think about and he tapped. his. T.O. tapped. T.O. tapped to chill. And I enjoy watching. I actually. I enjoy listening to his uh, his talking highlights when he's. Uh... He can't talk, can he? <laughs> yeah, the man, the man sounds like he's having a stroke every time he opens his mouth. Yeah, Tito Ortiz can't get a sentence yeah. together. I do get on that on YouTube. It is a lot of fun. He talks worse than me. <laughs> yeah, but no, you know, I still have sleepless nights thinking about Tiwati's and Chuck Liddell free and just what a what a shambles that was, an absolute shambles. So I've got nothing more to say on the news. We've got quite a few fights to break down that have occurred over the last week. You know, starting with the Kater Holloway card, moving to the Kiesa Magni, and then the big 257. We'll quickly gloss over the Kiesa Magni card because there was only one fight of any real value on it um, in that Michael Kiesa beat Neil Magni. K Diggy, what do you think's next for Kiesa? Who do you want in the fight? Well, he called out our boy Colby Covington, didn't he? But I can't say, I, I think Colby's, Colby and Jorge need to get there, need to get fixed up there. I'm just trying to think in in the welterweight division who would who would be suitable for him. Maybe Thompson. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Thompson. off the top of my head. I'm not sure who who the best person would be to to go against him. Maybe someone maybe someone in the top ten most definitely. But he he, he did really well against Bagney. It was it was a very impressive performance. It was a commanding performance, wasn't it? Commanding. I, I had, had Magnet. Well, I had Kiesa going into it, and then two hours before. No, just before the fight, Kiesa was saying, "Oh, maybe he might, he might beat me. He might do this." And then, and I was like, "Fuck you! You're not going to win." And then, and then I switched my decision. And then, lo and behold, decision. But no, I'm, I'm not too sure who the best person. Maybe I want to say Li Li Jing Lang after him, after his performance against. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. For looking at the rankings, you've got Kiesa at six. And if you're saying you want someone above him to fight someone above him, then the real obvious choice for is Stephen Thompson, who's ranked at fifth. Um, um, I, I don't think that's a bad just, fight, actually. Uh, I, I, I was going to say Vicente Luque, but he's just been booked against Tyron Woodley, hasn't he? Have they? Are they fighting? Yeah, well, a rumoured booking, but they've just been uh, going to say Vicente Luque, but um, I think there's something about them and Tyron, him and Tyron Woodley. Yeah, it's in well, the works for UFC okay. 260. Two sixty. That's a that's a good fight. That I think Kies is one of these guys that he's come up. Yeah, he, he submitted Condit when they fought. He's taken Diego Sanchez to an absolutely resounding decision victory. He's mm. beat RDA to a decision. Now he's beat Neil Magny to a decision. He's coming out here and he's putting on good performances, but he's not. Setting the crowds on like is he? he's not getting people talking, he's just the name that's there or thereabouts in the division. Jimbo Slash, do you think Michael Kiesa can actually hang with the top boys at welterweight? Um, I do actually think he can hang with them, but I think he's going to end up with Leon Edwards syndrome, um, of being a very good fighter and not getting the fight he deserves, um, mainly because he's very similar to Leon Edwards in that he puts on extremely commanding performances. Dominates, wins quite quite substantially, but no, but he doesn't make the crowd the general the general populace. So I find it, I thought his performance was really quite interesting to watch. Um, oh, I enjoyed it as well. I'd, he's not going to set the world on fire with these, and he's uh, and his personality. Like the only time I've ever tried to talk trash, he got really upset that someone insulted his mum. <laughs> they don't um, talk about my mum. <laughs> so like, I. I do think he's going to have to win a few more fights. I, I think a fight against him versus Woodley would have been really good. Yeah. Um, because in the final nail in Woodley's coffin, 
and uh, he can go off and do some rapping because I, I don't want to see Woodley get hurt anymore. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to fall victim to Leon Edwards syndrome. Yeah. It's a, it's a compelling time, point. Woodley this time, he'll only be 23 rounds he's lost in a row. <laughs> or is it, will it be 18 rounds? It'll be 18, mate. You're getting ahead of you. Unless he has another main event before he fights Kiesa. You're getting a bit ahead of yourself over there, mate. Um, so, Neil Magny obviously losing. Quite a, a disappointing loss for him. Quite a big setback um, in terms of his stance and position within the division. Who do you want to see him fight next, boys? Uh, I'll, I'll go first because I actually have a, a thought, if that's all right. Um, yeah. yeah. Only like 2019, might be in early 2020. I didn't think it was a 2020. Run the rematch back with Ali. Run it back. Oh, really? Last, that was last year, that. Yeah, that, that went back. March. It was March. It was March of last year. With the Leech looks different. Leech and Liang. Leech and Liang. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I think Jeff Neal would be a good fight, to be honest with you. Both coming off yes. losses, similar positions in the rankings. Um, big victory for either man, and I think that's a good fight. K Diggy, anything you want to add before we move on to the uh, Holloway Cater card? No, I don't think so. I think um, I think we've got it all bang on there. I think um, yeah, yeah. Jeff Neal, Lee 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 Yeah, no, not maybe not. I don't want to see sort of the a uh, an immediate rematch, but yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm sure they'll, they'll finish yeah. something out. If- before we move on, all, all I will say about Neil Magny is that I do like Neil Magny. I think he's a good fighter. He's an mm. active fighter. The, the thing that's just so frustrating about him is that if he could put his game together and use his reach, because he's so long, he's such a long fighter. If he could actually implement his game and use his physical gifts to his advantage, he would be a world beater, but he just can't seem to get his striking together. What he needs to do is get that graft on with the boxing and, and work on it, because if he could use his length, he'd beat everybody in that division. No doubt in my mind, but he just won't do it. Anyway, Holloway, Kate, we'll, we'll look at just pretty much the main card for this as it did have some verdict picks. A um, bit of a mixed bag for us all, to be fair. Um, main card, I thought, to be fair, it was on at a beautiful time for us. I think the main card started at like 8 o'clock. So yeah. early doors, all the fights, it was just an absolute joy. And some good results in all the fights. All all fights I enjoyed. Some shocking knockouts uh, in some of them. Horrible knockouts. So we'll start off with the uh, the first fight of the main card that I got wrong with Hawaii's Punahili Serenio knocking out Dusko Todorovic um, in the first round. I thought Todorovic looked great at the start. Beautiful yeah. head movement. Really, really nice head movement. I thought my pick of the decision is coming in beautifully, and then he uh, he got hit, and it was over. Very quickly, he got dropped about. It felt about twelve times, then it just kept falling over every time he got clipped by him. And uh, credit where credit's due, K Diggy, you um, you were selling him to me. You said he were gonna he were gonna sub Todorovic Puna Haley, but you, you were really high on him before the fight. And credit where credit's due, you both got this one right. Beautiful performance, uh, K Diggy. How did you know? To be fair, it was I don't know. I just I just thought I wanted to check out the fight. I saw that that Dusko had had the backing from the fans, and I, I hadn't really heard of any of these guys before. So I thought let's get on YouTube, have a quick look. And what I saw on YouTube from Puna was was incredible. Really, he just had so much power in his hands, and every every time he'd hit someone on the chin, they just drop like a sack of spuds. And I thought, why not? Why can't he carry on doing this? And and he did. He's he's got he's got um. He's got steel in his hands like Jeff Neal. Yeah. I think for a fighter like Puna Haley, he's still very young in his career. We're not, and let's not talk about putting him up against someone who you know is in that top 15 and a ranked fighter because he's nowhere near ready to that. Is there anyone that comes to mind for you, Jimbo, kind of at the lower end of the middleweight division in the UFC that you'd like to see him fight? Oh, uh, now, now, he put, now he put me on the spot here. Spot here. In the low... I'm trying to think of who, who they've got signed under in the middleweights. It's a... Uh, Bit of a sparse division from what I remember, isn't it? Um, my immediate answer is always someone like, but not. But oh, no, no, I can't. I'm just, um, I'll, no, I'll, to be honest, no. I'm trying to think of anyone who's who's been ranked who's like just outside the rankings. Uh, do you know, actually, no, 
I knew I wanted to fight. Go on. Exactly what I wanted to fight. I wanted to fight the loser of the next fight card up. The next fight up. The... Oh. oh, so we'll talk about that now. Joaquin Buckley against Alessio de Chirico. Um, do you want to talk us through that fight, Jimbo Slice? Tell me what happened. I was just, I picked Buckley to win, but I was so happy when Buckley, it was like a pretty much Buckley was coming out trying to show off, swing for the fences, I'm going to knock you out. Uh, Buckley got hit with a pitcher perfect head kick, mm. knocked out cold. I was so happy. This was a man who earlier in the week claimed that his, his knockout was as amazing as the showtime kick, which was done in a championship fight and secured Anthony Pettis to win. He, 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 compared, he said he was better than a prime Anthony Pettis. This man is a clown and he was treated like a clown and got knocked out cold. All I'll say here, boys, is that, yeah, I picked you, Kenneko, for a decision, but the way that I said the fight was going to play out pretty much exactly as it did. I was saying, you know, in, in the build-up for the fight, Joaquin Buckley thinks he's the dog's bollocks, and like you said, Jimbo, kind of going around saying that his vital knockout was better than the showtime kick, purely because he knocked the geezer out. Uh, it, 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 the writing was on the wall for this one. He was fighting in his other two fights in the UFC. Debut was people who hadn't fought there before. Completely unproven commodities. Yeah, Jakiriko, I think, had a two and three record going into the fight within the UFC. But he'd always fought decent people. He'd never fought scrubs. He was always fighting them kind of lower end, decent fighters. So I think it was a really big test for Buckley that he, he obviously lost in such a dramatic fashion, getting knocked out in the first round. Just a bit of an interesting one for Jukidiko. Uh, when the fight was over, John Anik went over to speak to him. He said, I ain't giving you no post-fight chat. I don't want out. And after the fact, he said that the reason he did that is because he believes that losers, even if they get knocked out, should be interviewed in the ring as well. And KD, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that you'd like to see moving forward? No, well, if it's a if it's a big name fight and they haven't been knocked out and they know what they're saying and what they're doing, then I'm happy for them to put their hand up and say, "Hey, if you do want to, if you do want to do the interview afterwards, I will do." But if they've been knocked out, if it's a lower, if it's if it's the f second second fight of the main cars, we, we've got we, we need to move on. We've got we've got other things to do, you know. So yeah. I didn't I didn't agree with what he said. No, I, I didn't either. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Sorry, Jimbo, I'll, I'll let you get, get in here momentarily. I'll, I'll, but... I was going to say, the person I, uh, I was thinking of was Gerald Mearshaw. I thought I'll, he could fight but um, as well. But That's a good fight. Ever since that, you think, when he interviewed DC at 240, it's like, no, don't want to don't want to see uh, don't want to see anyone being interviewed after that. Like, DC looks like he knew what he was doing, but he had no idea what he was doing. He was just being knocked out cold by a man who popped the steroids. Yeah. Um, I don't want to see losers being interviewed. Was it when I counter was... that though? I counter that, Jimbo. I will counter that. If losers after getting knocked out and never got interviewed, we would not have nuggets such as he clearly tapped. I felt the tap. <laughs> Steve Bay tapped. And we wouldn't have Aldo after his fight with Conor McGregor saying, well, we didn't really fight because it only lasted 13 seconds. With Joe Rogan uh, hitting him with a rebuttal of, well, he did have a fight and he got knocked out in 13 seconds. Um, <laughs> I think I agree with Kay Diggy. If, if the fight commands it, if it's a big fight, you know, like the 257 main event, I think you've got to talk to them both because people want to know what the other fighter's got to say about the matter. But if they're, if they're out cold and unconscious, you know, like Ben Asker, after got need to oblivion by... Uh, Imagine, well, maybe not. Ben Asker, <laughs> what are yeah. you gonna say, Ben? <laughs> That's what he's gotta say. He's fucking starting the cum. Um, <laughs> it would have been nice to move it out. I had to say after after the fight, which we may talk about later. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll get into that. Don't you worry. The next fight, another first round knockout. Uh, Santiago Pozanibio. Coming back after quite a lengthy layoff. Uh, again, the fight playing out exactly as I said it would, albeit I said a decision. Lee Jingliang coming out there and uh, starching Santiago with what was simply a beautiful hook. Uh, completely 
knocked him out cold. And K Diggy, I know that you've picked Santiago to win this fight, but do you think that layoff played a fact a part in him losing in the manner in which he did? I've got I've got no sympathy. I was very pissed off when this when this fight happened. I knew that the big dog had taken the big commanding lead on the verdict. And I just thought I just looked at Santiago and and it wasn't like it was a out of nowhere knockout. He just Li, Li Jing Lang was just picking him off, and then he just then he just took his head off. And and I was just I was just so frustrated because the way the, the the fights that I saw Santiago in previously, where he's just been completely dominant, he, he just he just didn't have any of it. And it probably is because of the long layoff, but I don't care. He's a prick. Yeah, and. Jimbo Slice, you know, Santiago Ponzinibbio at one time was highly touted within the welterweight division. Um, do you think he can get back to that level of respect? And if so, who do you think he needs to fight next to get there? Well, this this wasn't the man, in my mind, who fought Neil Magny. This wasn't the same man. Um, but the question is, can he return to there? Can he return to those heights. He's been knocked out by someone. I don't was is he in the top ten at Worldweight? I don't think he is. It might be like 11, 12. Um I think he's just in the top ten. So top I 10. think you give you give um Santiago Pontinibio one more shot at um Robbie Lawler because he's ranked 14, I think, maybe 15th. You give a shot at Robbie Lawler, one more ranked shot shot at a ranked opponent. If he can't pull through on that I don't think there's any chance of uh, him coming back from that. See, for me, I was thinking about this after the fight. I thought, who, who can he fight kind of to get back to that prime position where he needs to be? And not necessarily a tune-up fight, but someone of a lesser calibre. And I thought, let's not make it rank. Give him someone like Mickey Gall. Um, oh, that's tantalising. It's, it, it's, it's a nice kind of like second fight on the main card kind of fight, you know, so, penultimate prelim fight. I think it's a good fight. You've got Mickey Gall, who's still young in the game, kind of losing to these big names. And I think it'd be a a good test for him. And it'd be a good kind of test for Santiago to see where he is as a performer, as a fighter. Can he beat, you know, the fighters that haven't got necessarily the big skills on the stand-up? It's a fight that interests me and I'd like to see it. And failing that, I think Robbie Lawler's a pretty good shout, to be fair. You've got an over-the-hill Lawler taking on Ponzinibbio, who's not the man he once was. Um, so, moving on to that, staying in the welterweight division, veterans classic, um, Carlos Condit defeating Matt Brown. Um, K Diggy, tell, talk me through your thoughts on this one. It was a great fight, wasn't it? It was, it was so enjoyable to watch. Yeah. They, they just both showed so much class in the fight. They just both showcased, both showcased so much skills. It was back and forth. Um, I did I did pip it to, to Condit. Um, I mean, it was maybe all three rounds off or two rounds to one. Um, and, and, yeah, I think it, it, we did sort of say prior to the fight we wanted them to go out holding hands and retire. But from the sounds of it, it looks like neither of them have retired and, and Condit was calling, calling other fighters out. So... Um, I guess he's, he's still he's still got some fire in the belly and good luck to him in his next fight. Yeah. For me, um, I thought it was a great fight. I picked Matt Brown to win. Ooh, in my book, I gave him the first round on the verdict. I had it at 29-28 for Condit and I know that Matt Brown took issues with the 30-27 sweep. I think Condit's got a lot to give, to be fair. I think Brown's done. I think he's got stamina for a round, a round and a half and he can't, he can't maintain that level of performance throughout a full 15 minutes where I think Condit, whilst he's not going to be fighting for a title anytime soon, he has still got that, that fire within him. Um, Jimbo Slice, did, what were your thoughts on Matt Brown taking issue with the score in this one? Did you agree with him or do you think you were talking shit? I had it 29-28. However, I don't, I think it was the first round was close enough that it doesn't matter. Like you, you can't argue when the rounds that close. It was a um, close round. Yeah. That um, he did have control, but Condit was doing more from the bottom, from what I remember. Condit yeah, seemed to be more active one. Um, so I compared with him somebody gave it to Condit. 
it's not like this because when Bas Rutan was on the bottom and just being absolutely demolished in small one. This is yeah. someone who was on the on bottom actually acted from the bottom. Um, I was really actually quite impressed with Combit. He did a beautiful trip takedown at some point. Uh, but the bit that surprised me was that this was more of a grappling affair. It was surprisingly grappling heavy for two yeah. people, especially Combit, who's known for just striking. It, it, it surprised me how how grappling heavy this was, but I enjoyed it. It was a great fight. Felt like I was watching a fight from 2012, 2011. Can't, can't play. No, I agree. I thought it was a good fight. Um, I'm excited to see what comes next. Am I am I making things up when I say that Condit's a free agent now? Am I making uh, that he, up? I think it was his last fight in his contract. I do think you're yeah. right. Um, it'd be interesting to see whether he stays with UFC or goes to one of the lower tier organisations. But moving to the main event, um, Holloway, Cater, Holloway putting on what I'd argue is probably one of the, if not the best performance he's ever put on in the UFC. And I'll be quite honest with you boys, uh, I know we all picked Cater here. I expected this fight to play out pretty much the other way around with Cater yeah. putting on an absolute dominating performance against Holloway. So the manner in which he won uh, was phenomenal. Unbelievable performance. Um, and I'll come to you first, K Diggy. There's been a lot of people talking about this fight after the fact, you know, saying should it have been stopped at any point? Should Cater's corner have thrown the towel in? And that's what I'll ask you. Do you think the fight should have been stopped? I don't think I don't think Calvin Cater would ever wanted it to be stopped. He is he, he was still standing, he's got, he's got a huge heart and and he's a, he's, he's got a great chin as well, which was shown <laughs> one of the one of the best showcases of a chin in UFC history. Uh, right there, five rounds of absolute demolition to his face and and his body and his legs, and he just took it. Um, I don't think he he probably would have gone out there, and he he wouldn't he he'll never he'll prefer to go on his sword rather than someone throwing the towel. So, yeah. uh, but the referee could have stopped at any time. I'm glad he didn't because in that yeah. fifth round was one of a, a classic UFC moment where where Holloway was talking to the the. Um, the commentator saying he's the best boxer in UFC history, whilst dodging uh, Cater's senior senior boxing hands. It was just incredible. So, in my in my standpoint, it, no, it didn't it didn't need to be stopped. But if it had been, I wouldn't have been shocked that it had been stopped. No. And Jimbo Slice, what do you think's next for Max Holloway? Uh. The winner of Volk and Ortega. I think that's, I think there's, yeah, I think as Chael Sonnen often says, when there's someone that good, you can't put them against the number fourth ranked or the sixth ranked or the seventh ranked. It's, it's unethical. You're putting someone that good against someone who can't defend themselves yeah. to that level. It's unethical. You can't have someone in there who's that much better and he's inflicting that much damage on these people. Um, so I really think. I think, yeah, Ortega. If he's, I, I think Ortega. I think Ortega might take this against Bolt. So I think it'll be a personally. I think it'll be a, a Holloway Ortega two. I think. I think it's interesting. I mean, in, in the run up to the Holloway Cater card, I did rewatch the Holloway Volkanovski two fight because I hadn't actually seen it since it was a you know happened back in July, and. I maintain even even more so now that Volkanovski won that fight because um, I thought he did at the time, but then first two rounds until the knockdowns knockdowns uh, were incredibly incredibly close, and then I think three, four, five, Volkanovski took over. I mean, for me, I think that Holloway is a phenomenal fighter, best boxer in the UFC. Maybe not because he got pieced up by Dustin Poirier when he moved up to lightweight, but exactly. I think he's a phenomenal fighter. And I think, you know, when you look at skills and things like that, is he better than Volkanovski? Yeah, he probably is. But, you know, the, the old same style makes fights. I think that Volkanovski is one of these guys that's just got his number, is always going to beat him if they ever fight. Um, whereas I agree with you, Jimbo, if we get an Ortega Holloway too, if it, the first fight was anything to go by, Holloway will be the uh, the champion again. So I think the future is exciting for Max Holloway and I'm looking forward to that. 
Volkanovski Ortega fight that takes place. I think March 27th, same card as Steve Pay and Garnu too. So we've got we've got some unreal title fights coming up and a lot of unreal title fights that are going to be happening later on in the year. I think it's a great fight. Um Holloway, I, either way, I, either man. Kind of counterpart, you think. I I, I think I actually, I, I disagree with certain some things you said about Volkanovski there. I think, I think he has a, I think he isn't as skilled as Max, as you said, I agree. But I think he's got a better fight IQ than Max. I think Max doesn't adjust on the fly. And I think that's what, that's what yeah. Volkanovski does, is he adjusts. It's not, not that he's got a better style. I think he's just faster thinking and he thinks, right, okay, yeah. this, this isn't working. I'll try this while... Max just goes, this isn't working. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. And eventually it'll work because I'm putting so much pressure on. Yeah. I don't know it's, if that's it's my personal take. Have you got any any, any rebuttal here, K. Diggy? Uh, maybe just to sort of talk about the future of Calvin Kaya, really. Obviously, he needs a little bit of time to um, to recover and, and sit back as, as, um, as Chang Sung Jung does. The Korean zombie who who obviously got pieced up by Brian Ortega. So I think it's great. Fun. Give them their give them their time, and then put them in the octagon, and that will be a a striking masterclass. I I've got another thought. I, I was sat there thinking about this. He needs to go against England's own. He needs to go against Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen's not high enough ranked. No, he's not, not ninth. Not ready yet. He's ranked nine. Arnold Allen, Al, he needs another fight, does Arnold Allen, though. He needs to fight someone else to get to that next level. He, he that's fight against Steve, didn't it? He had a fight against Steve. Yeah, that, that's the fight Arnold Allen needs. But no, I think I think you, 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 you're killing Arnold Allen if they have that fight. I'm not Arnold. Arnold, Arnold, has skill. Arnold has the skill. So, oh, yeah, all, all, all across the board. It was a really good card, to be fair. Even the the um, prelims were pretty decent, some decent fights on them. But we'll get into 257, a great card. A lot to discuss here, a lot of kind of last-minute movements within that card. And we'll start off by working his way through the main card with Marina Rodriguez coming out and uh, dismantling Rebus in quite convincing fashion in the second round. Um, there was a point where she dropped her. It looked like Herb Dean had stopped the fight and he hadn't, and then the fight continued and he, she battered her again. Um, we all went for Rebus here, didn't we? Mm. we? We were all kind of high on her after a dismantling of Paige Van Zandt back in July. And it just, she didn't look terrible in the first round, but, you know, where, where do we think it went wrong for her, Jimbo Slice? Um, I think it went wrong with her that she couldn't take uh, Rodriguez down. She Rebus doesn't have the hands yet. Doesn't have the, she's a great ground game. Um, I just don't think she just has the skill on the feet. Like she's she's fought Paige Van Zandt, who has fairly decent hands and this that. But all that, all that ha- ha- fight was takedown submission. Um, I think here she didn't have the stand up. She fought someone who's more established in the divisions, fought higher quality opponents for a longer period of time, and uh, unfortunately, I, I said she got knocked out twice in that fight. Yeah. Um, I think she'll come back. I think she'll take a bit of time off, rebuild, regroup. Six million dollar man come back stronger. Yeah, the the thing the thing for me that I noticed with this one, and um, I don't know if you boys saw this, but there was something about Amanda Rebus the morning of the fight where they were saying that she'd piled on about two, I think possibly two stone. Morning what? of the fight, she was weighing about one hundred and forty three pounds. So, do we think that the weight cut could have had a played a factor in that? And if so, do we think that the right move for her might be to go from? Flyweight and up to bantamweight, K. Diggy. Is this not a strawweight fight? Is it strawweight? Oh, God, yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was a strawweight fight. It yeah. Is- In that case, should we go up from uh, strawweight to uh, flyweight? flyweight? That, if, there's, if there's any truth in that, that is inhumane. And to pack that much weight on in the space of 24 hours... And then fight on a main card. In, it's on, wild, isn't it? It's, it's wild. That's insane. Like yeah. no body. Like you can't have a, a body that it can't go right. Surely it can't go right. No. So, yeah, I can. I mean, if, if, 
I guess it, it would it would take a big big toll on her. So there could be a reason yeah. behind it, but then again, it might just be that she she just was out outdone by Rodriguez. I mean, Rodriguez looked great. To be fair, she came out and looked really good in both rounds, and I think she's got an exciting career ahead of her at straw weight, where there is a lot of good matchups. To be fair, I think for me, if Rebus is cutting this kind of weight, I won't be shocked to see a miss weight in you know either her next fight or the one after that. But Rodriguez, um, a lot of tantalising matchups within that straw weight division. Who do you want to see a fight next, K Digger? Um, this uh, Yan Yan Zhao now. The um... yeah. The, the yeah Chinese girl obviously she's got she, well everyone just has decisions in in the UFC so uh, the women's UFC but there's, there'll be a lot of striking on 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 show obviously uh, Marina might give us some give us some options obviously coming off uh, coming off after that and um, that knockout victory it might put Yan on a back foot a little bit more it could be a could be an exciting fight uh, uh, Yan's Jan's undefeated in the UFC as well, so yeah, I'd say that that's the, the the fight to make. I think that's a great fight to be fair. I mean, I was just I was just looking at the um, the the division and some of the rankings, and I'd forgotten that. I think they've announced, or it's rumored, um, Nina Ansar off against Mackenzie Dern is going to be happening at some point in the not in the near future, which is a great fight. But yeah, I think. That's a great Marina Rodriguez taking on anyone in that top five. I think it's a great fight. Yang Zhao Nan, I think the one to make. I don't think she's quite ready for Yuana yet. And Fug Rose, as far as I'm aware, is going to be fighting Zhang Wei Li in the not so distant future for that title. So a great fight, a really good start to the card um, and a great platform for that division for the women. Uh, another fight that I changed my pick early, no, not early, minutes before the fight started, uh, where you've got Mahmoud Muradov, who's part of Floyd Mayweather's money team, um, taking Andrew Sanchez out in the third round uh, via TKO. Jimbo Slice, Andrew Sanchez, you know, tough winner. believe he might have even beaten Khalil Roundtree to win tough. Um, it was certainly that year, but I can't remember. It might have been that year. Do you think he belongs in the UFC anymore? Um, I think one more fight. One one last chance um, to get this. He's he, he's not on a losing streak, is he? I think he I think before this he'd knocked someone out and done, uh, got a performance tonight. But he's he hasn't. He's consistently fell against the top, the top or top. He's like he's he lost yeah. against the top. He's lost against Smith. He's not going to be top quality, but I think he belongs in the in the roster if. Yeah. If there's a few, there's a few more I'd cut before I'd cut Andrew Sanchez. I'd, speaking oh, of Sanchez, I'd cut Diego. Undoubtedly. I'd cut Diego Sanchez before. So I think oh, yeah. even one more fight if he um if he performs horrendously um I would I would uh, I'd kill him on the next one. But I think in this one it wasn't like he was it was the worst performance ever. Um but yeah that's what my opinion. The thing for me with Sanchez, and this is why I changed my pick, I originally had him as a decision. I was thinking back to years ago when he fought Anthony Smith and completely in control the first two rounds of the fight and then just gassed out horrendously in the third round and got finished. And I was sat there thinking, do you know what? This uh, Mahmoud Muradov is, by all accounts, a great striker. I think he's going to knock him out in the third round. And lo and behold, he did. That was my pick and I got it bang on. You know, K. Diggy Muradov, quite a highly touted prospect within the UFC. Do you, how do you want the UFC to progress him as a fighter? Do you want him to go down the Kamaru Usman route of slowly building them up, or do you want him to go down the uh, the Kamzat route of chucking them straight in there with some big boys? I think you need a mix, don't you, in in the divisions? Yeah. And I think because that that division's already got that Kamzat who they are throwing up. Um, obviously, it's worked before with your Colby Covingtons and your Kamara Usmans and your Gilbert Burns. Look where they are, are now; they're top three, and it that yeah. system does work. So I think that that's the way to go with it. And there's no rush. This division is beautiful, and it, and yeah. it'll win, and it'll go up and up and up, and there'll be no, um, there'll be no rush. Yeah, I think I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, 
moving forward. And I agree. I think he's one to build up slowly, possibly get, kind of give him a lower tier guy and then give him someone like Sean Strickland, Brendan Allen, someone that's quite highly touted, highly respected within the division, um, but not necessarily a top boy. And then possibly give him a lower ranked fighter. So before we kind of break down the top three fights on this card, a uh, bit of heartbreak on the fight past prelims uh, that I forgot to mention with Nick Lentz retiring. So he had his fight with Arnold Allen last year when he suffered quite a nasty eye injury, came back for the first time against a prospect um, in the form of Mosvarev Loaf, however you pronounce that last name, and lost quite convincingly, to be fair. Pretty disappointing fight. Uh, I love Nick Lentz. Whenever I do any kind of UFC game, any kind of championship, you know, universe mode. My goal is always to get Nick Lentz as a champion. I don't know why. I just oh, like the man. Cool. Um, <laughs> I always do. I always like to get him up there just for the banter. A real shame to see him go and, you know, to go out in the manner in which he did. Had he not retired Jimbo, you know, he was on a free fight skid. Do you think the UFC would have cut him? I think there's a, I think there's a good possibility um, he would have. He'd been he'd been with the UFC for so long though. Yeah. Had had he been on a big streak, losing streak like that before? I was trying to think it was a no. This would be his first three I fights. Think losing streak. I think he possibly lost two on the bounce, but never three. Yeah, he lost two on the bounce before, but this is his first three in a, in a bounce. So he might have cut him, but I, I just I'm I'm with you. I'm, I'm I was always a big fan of Nick Lentz, which was a shame that I didn't like when he fought Arnold Allen last year because he wanted either to lose. Um, but I, I'm sad to see him retire. Um, and he he, ne- he never he never was amazing, but he was always entertaining. And even in this bit with he with his non-stop, I'm going to try and guillotine choke. I'm going to try and guillotine you. I'm yeah. going to try and guillotine. You. It was it was he put on an entertaining final fight. And he said he, he could only see sixty percent of what he used to, saw in his last fight. So if he if he did that on forty percent, he could beat up most people in the world, can't he? Yeah, um, you know all the best to Nick Lentz and you know whatever he chooses to do from here. Uh, so moving on with the card, we've got a women's flyweight fight, not not strawweight or bantamweight flyweight fight, where Joan Calderwood, uh, Scottish fighter took out Jessica I via decision. And the main taking from this fight for me, I'll be quite honest with you, was the size of Calderwood and how big mm. she was in comparison to Jessica I. You've got Jessica I who, you know, does the best work at flyweight. But originally, when she joined the UFC, was fighting in the bantamweight division. you got Jojo, who was a strawweight. And I genuinely could not believe the size of her. She was so much taller, wider, in a good way, of course. And I'm not slagging her off and calling her fat or out. Like, she looked phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And her, her clinch work was absolutely superb. And for me, the only fight for her now is quite simply against uh, Valentina Shevchenko. There's nobody else that interests me. She was meant to fight her before she got subbed by Jennifer Meyer. And I'll come to you, Jimbo Slice, because I think you agree with me here, as opposed to Kay Diggy, who's pulling eyes. Do you think that Joanne Calderwood can hang with Shevchenko? Um, I think it's very, very unlikely. But what was what was Valentina's weakness in this last fight when she fought um, Maya? It was some parts of the clinch. And it was, it looked like she'd been out muscled at some points. So Jojo yeah. stands a chance. Now, I'd be rooting for her as a as a, a fellow fellow British person, but don't think she stands a chance, but I, I'd be, I'd be rooting, I'd be rooting for her, and I hope she does well. Um, and you're right, there's no other fight that she can fight. She has to fight for the title. I mean, I mean, I see, I see you there, K Diggy, and I see that look in your eye, and I get the feeling you don't agree with us. So I'll ask you, who should she fight next then? No, I think I think you're getting quite defensive here, big dog. But no, I think the, with with these with these fights, the, with these in the top sort of ten of of the women's flyweight, they, they, they win and lose as they wish and they don't make much changes anyway. So uh, everyone has to have a pop at Shevchenko and after getting a couple of wins, well, one one win, uh, Call the Wood lost the last, last fight before that, I guess it's her turn to step up and and, and go to the... <laughs> and get beheaded really I guess I guess that's just how it is isn't it but uh, what yeah. I would say is yeah I guess I guess it would be her or Lauren Murphy who um who who can who can get demolished next 
I mean, who else? Who else is there at the kind of? There's Jessica Andrade who's knocking about towards the top of that division as well. So you've really oh, got three players, and yeah, that are, you know could arguably fight Shevchenko next. So for me, I'd like to see Calderwood fight her because she took a risk taking on the Maya fight and she lost, and she's back on the right column now. And then have Lauren Murphy and Andrade fight each other, um, and have like a mini tournament. So you have Shevchenko, Calderwood, and then they fight the winner of them. Um, I think it, it could be a really good standing match. I think Shevchenko will bottle it and take her down early doors and just control her on the floor like she did later on in the Maya fight and when she fought Liz Carmouche. But um, as a British fan, a great fight to look forward to. And uh, speaking of looking forward to fights, uh, Jimbo Slice's boy, Michael Chandler, making waves in his debut in the UFC, knocking out Danoka halfway through the first round. And what, what Dana White described as the greatest debut in UFC history. Do you agree with him, Jimbo Slice? I think it's the second best. Um, as much, yeah, yeah. As much yeah. as I'm a fan of Michael Chandler, and he will be, he is in my pound pan list this year, as much as he will make it, Anthony Silver's debut was better, but I think it was the second best. I can't think of a, a smoother debut he gets in Dan Hooker's face. He walks Dan Hooker down. He hits him to the body. He takes a few leg kicks. Hopefully he sorts that out next time. Um, people say Dan Hooker looks scared. I disagree. I think Dan Hooker was afraid of the takedown, which gets his hands down low. So, Hook, so then he went to the body, came up, onto the chin, out, out like a light, then cut, cut one of the best promos I've heard in the ring for a while. It was, a, it was like Ben Rothwell's but better. I was, I was I was so happy. I was so happy that Michael Chandler actually proved that he is he's he's up there. He's he's top quality. He is there. Um, I I, 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 can, I can go on about this. I, this was my main event. This was what I was excited about. This is the you, you sit I here. You sit here, Jimbo. You know, gloating and you know. Talking about Michael Chandler and, and giving it, you know, and, and saying how much you love him and frothing over him. The, the thing, the thing that I'll I'll say to you: Who did you pick to win this fight on the verdict? On verdict, I picked Dan Hooker, and the reason I picked Dan Hooker because if Dan Hooker won, I'd feel a bit all right. I want it because there's a, there's a bit of happiness inside me that Dan Hooker won. That was my exact reason. Fence, fence. <laughs> oh, you've got the original slice. You've got zero bottle. You know, you've yeah. been talking about Michael Chandler but for weeks saying he's the best in the division, you know, and he's gonna come here yeah. and he's gonna make waves. Put your money where your mouth is, man. Don't don't bottle it and, and pick pick, you know, the cop out. The, ver- the, verdict, the verdict the ver- <laughs> the verdict is where you put where you think's gonna win. So as far as I'm concerned, you thought Hooker was gonna beat Chandler. Well, he didn't, did he? So that and yeah, my favourite you picked him to you picked him to another one of my favourite you know, was they mentioned that he was a, a Bellator champion. It was the first time I think they've mentioned it before because they kept mentioning that he was a, a former champion in other in other promotions. It felt a bit like WWE when they used to mention TNA without mentioning TNA. But I felt like I think the good that they eventually acknowledged Bellator. I was I was just happy. I I don't think you you have the the right to call yourself the number one Chandler fan on this anymore because you didn't pick yeah, him. It is them. now good. The big dog. The big dog is the number one Chandler fan because I had the bottle to pick him when I thought he was going to win. Unlike you, so K Diggy. Potential fights. There's a lot of rumors swirling round that Chandler's going to be fighting Justin Gaethje next. Is that a fight that you want to see? I'd 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 take on the Gaethje. I'd let him I'd let him go for Gaethje. I think that make it makes sense. It is a very clear stepping stone from from um, Hooker. I just want to say I was absolutely heartbroken when this happened because I just I just saw exactly what was going to happen in this pod. I, to be honest, I thought Big Jimbo, well, I knew Jimbo Slice would be gloating, but I didn't realise they didn't pick him until I woke up the next morning and, and realised that. And I saw, unfortunately, the big dog had him, which uh, which probably hurts even more when when we eventually look at the standings. Um, but, yeah, moving back on to the, the future, I think... I, I think yeah, just Justin Gaethje makes makes so much sense for him. I don't think the the title fight is yet. Yeah, you can't come into the as as 
as Dustin Poirier said, he said, you can't come into the UFC and have one fight and then be fighting for the championship. Dustin Poirier has had over 20 fights in the UFC and he and he's only had the crack at the championship once. You can't you can't win once and then have a crack at the championship. It just it just doesn't work like that. Gilbert Melendez got it in his first fight this back is, in 2013. I'm just, I'm, this is different. This is, this is the second the biggest division. This is the best and biggest division in the UFC. You can't be That was the lightweight too. I know, but it probably wasn't as good as the lightweight division is now. <laughs> it's, it, I think it's a great matchup. You know, we'll talk about what's going to be happening with Poirier and who's going to be fighting momentarily. But when you think about the top players in that division, you know, putting Khabib aside, re- realistically, he's gone. He isn't coming back. They've got to progress the division without him. You know, Chandler, Gaethje from a ranking standpoint, from a technical standpoint, from a style map standpoint, it makes sense everywhere. It's a great fight. Just sitting here talking about it now, I've got ideas of what's going to happen whirling through my head. Is Gaethje going to leg kick Chandler to oblivion? Is Chandler going to come down and take him down and implement his wrestling? The fight could go anyway. I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, I think it's a superb fight. There was a, a take that I'd like, I saw on Twitter about this and I said and I, I thought you know what I never thought of it like that before, but yeah that's right Michael Chandler fights the way that Tyron Woodley should fight he comes out he advances forward he's got power in his hands and he's got and he's a good wrestler he fights that's like old Tyron school is. Tyron Woodley then that's how Tyron Woodley used to fight before he lost his yeah, bottle it is. yeah it is he throws he's his hand Jim Bell slice and uh, bottled it but yeah it's a great match a great match and moving on from this we've got the main event that we all picked the right fighter. We were calling this. Me and me and K Diggy were texting at the time of the fight. We were both there, up early doors, excited watching it. And I said to you, I said, I visualize it. I visualize a second round knockout from party A to immigrant. Wait, 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 wait. But what did you put in your verdict? I put fourth round. I didn't change it on there. Oh, um, you lost your bottle. Did you not go for Connor? Was it, it was, no man, I went for party. He went he went. He went for Connor because he's got no fucking good picks in him on old Jimbo Slice. Um, I, I, I Sorry, proceed. I said it early doors. I said it early. I was talking to my boys before and they were talking about the fight. I said, oh, do you reckon it's going to be a good one? And I said, it is going to be a good one, but I don't think it's going to be the fight for McGregor that everybody's expecting it to be. And, you know, it's nice to be right. It's nice to be right with people with these fights. When you actually say what's going to happen, you know, Poirier, came out and just annihilated him in that second round. The first round was quite close. McGregor got it across all three judges, uh, 10-9 across the board. But in that second round, the second that McGregor was starting to have trouble with his movement because of the ferocious leg kicks that Poirier had thrown him, the writing was on the wall. It was only a matter of time and absolutely beautiful knockout. Um, K Diggy, I'm not thinking that you, uh, you got a little bit of the old uh, cashish for this one. I did. I I saw the odds and they were just they were too good not to not to take on five to two for a Dustin Poirier win. All of my all my mates were the same. They were all thinking Connor was going to win. Put hundred pounds on, get three hundred and forty quid back. It was it was money. It was money in the bank, and I got myself. I bought myself a new iPhone from the money. Did you? Got. So <laughs> it's uh, I got twelve. Got an iPhone think, twelve. At the iPhone 12 Pro. Beautiful. So, I want to thank uh, the Good Fight Foundation for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and with with the fight, it was it was great. It was. I I thought Connor did look really good. People are people are unfairly criticizing him now. These these blips do happen in in the in the in MMA. It's not like boxing where. Where you lose and you you crash crash into oblivion and you've done forever. He's he's got so much left in him. He he went up against Barring Khabib, the best lightweight on the planet right now, yeah. and and but but the bookies, no, but no one else saw it apart from the Smash Bros MMA UK. Well, apart from Jim Boss last, because he picked Conor McGregor yeah, well, and knockout. I'm going to put my two cents in here. Now I've always said. I've always said Dustin fights too many in that octagon. He fights the lights, 
and he fights the opponent, he fights the, the stadium, he fights, he fights being another big moment. And if when he doesn't, he comes out and he performs well. And do you know what? I never thought he'd put he'd be able to put that aside in this fight. I thought he'd have the image of being knocked out. I thought he'd have the I thought he'd have the the moment get to him. I thought he'd let the moment get to him. I thought he was the better fighter, but I thought he let the moment get to him. And he didn't. I was so happy that he didn't. This is one of the few times when the good guy seems to win. This is when the guy who was who's doing putting get, doing all these things for charity and not punching old men in bars and not doing these seedy things. This is when the time the good guy wins. Allegedly now, seedy you know, things. Allegedly alleg- seedy things. Allegedly seedy things. Yeah. yeah this is a t- this is a t- this is a time uh, that I'm really happy to be wrong. He didn't. He's. I feel like maybe he's finally put that those demons of fighting in front of millions aside. It might be the time that he can he can come out of the light and become undisputed champion because this, he should really be the champion now. Let's be honest. Yeah. He should be for the belt. From what it, it sounds good as though Khabib isn't coming back, as we said before. So the fight for me that makes sense here for Dustin, it's got to be Charles Oliveira. It's got to be. That is that is the fight to make. That's the fight to make. What are you shaking your head at, Jimbo Slice? You know, you know what the fight's to make. <laughs> if the fight is to make, Dustin Poirier versus Michael Chandler. Nah, that's next. You know, nah, it, that's, it's that's now. A, no, Chandler's it's not. time. You've got, you've you've John got, Cena. You've got, time is you've now. got Charles. Charles Oliveira, who's on an unfathomable win streak at the moment, has been performing in every fight for, God, you know, three, four years. Now, he hasn't lost since he fought Paul Felder at UFC 217 back in... Oh, no, it wasn't. It was 2 one. Was it 2 one eight? It was 2 one eight, wasn't it? It wasn't 2 one seven. It was um, the uh, Yeah, he fought the card after. He fought the card after. So he hasn't lost since December of 2017. He's on a... God, it must be about eight, nine, ten fight win streak now. He's... He's beaten everybody put in front of him and he's won in incredibly convincing fashion. That's the fight to make. Dustin Poirier, Charles Oliveira. You've got John Kavanagh, Conor McGregor clamouring for Dustin Poirier rematch, making this trilogy for the vacant title. Kay yeah. Diggy, we have the same same view here. Talk me through your thoughts on this yeah. one. I can tell from your face. Out of here. You just saw what happened. Let, let Conor build up his confidence again, put him back in there with scrub Nate Diaz, get him in there with old man Tony Ferguson, get him in, get him dusted up and get him cleaned up and then he can fight these proper fighters like your Dustin Poirier's and your Justin Gaethje's and your Charles Olivier. Your Michael Chandler. No. <laughs> we'll see. He, he's going to change. It's, it hurts, Sam. I don't know why... Maybe it's because you love him so much, but I'm just anti. I'm against Michael Chandler, and I want him to lose every fight he goes in. I don't know I think, why, but I do. I think the problem for Connor now is that because of the the star power he builds and the UFC being as as it is, you know, this isn't boxing where people can have a tune up fight when they lose, fight that lesser opponent to get. A bit of time in the cage, a bit of time in the ring and build the confidence back up because of the power that he pulls. It's always going to be a main event. It's always going to be five rounds and he's always got to fight someone of a certain calibre. And yeah. my concern is because of the time he's had out, you know, you know, he's only fought three times in the octagon since 2016. He's never going to get back to that level he was, you know, when he was winning the titles. He's not going to get there because he's going to have to fight people of such a high standard and high performance quality that... He's kind of shot himself in the foot a bit. You know, ideally, Jimbo, who would you like Conor McGregor to fight next? Ideally, um, I think given the uh, the Nate Diaz rematch, because yeah. really, let's be honest, the, the lightweight rankings are killer. Like, ranked 13th is my boy, like uh, Vinny Odariush. And genuinely, what a hard fight. Ranked, like, you can't give these people... You, Maybe Kevin Lee. Give him Kevin Lee. He, he's a he's a clown. He'll be he should be able to beat Kevin Lee. Um, I think Kevin like, Lee just taken down though. The destroyer. Yeah, like I'm looking at the rankings. Like now, be, be, below him is RDA. Okay, he might be RDA. Dan Hooker. Do you know what? Not a bad shout. Because that'd Felder. be a good fight. He, he's Felder. 
You can't. No, I don't know. Can you Thra- Diego Ferreira. He'd lose that. Alaya Quinta. These probably lose these that. these are names though, Jimbo, that don't carry that power to carry a, a car and be a main event. He needs to fight someone who's he well known. He got a main event he, fighting Cerrone. He's never yeah, but Cerrone's a known fighter. People know who Cerrone is. If I went and spoke to my mates and said who's Kevin Lee, they're gonna go who the fuck's Kevin Lee. I don't know who he is. They don't know. Well, People don't know who Kevin Lee is. People don't know who Alaya Quinter is. People don't know who Paul Felder is, Dan Oka. I, th- you know. I think, no, they, they wouldn't have known who Cowboy Cerrone was, though, would they, really? Oh, they did. People know who Cowboy is. Cowboy's, Cowboy's a big name. And this was, and that's why. This was before, this is before he got knocked out. Uh, Cowboy has the history behind him, most UFC knockouts, most UFC appearances. So they, yeah. they can promote it that way. And even if people didn't know him, you, you'd why, how don't you know this person? He's got the most knockouts, he's done this, he's done that, he's done that, the other. Yeah. They can away. sell him as yeah. a threat. You know, real estate I, I gen- mogul, real estate mogul, Alaya Quinter versus Conor McGregor. Is that going to sell a pay per view? No. I gen- yeah, I genuinely don't think you should give him anyone ranked above him at the moment. You, you, you. No, it's cost a shun. That's it's a scandalous take. If anybody says right. that, and I think the idea that he should fight Poirier for the vacant title is completely laughable. Losing in the manner in which he did, no one deserves to come off that not as champion and fight for the title again in, in the next fight. The That's, only thing it, is, it's, it's ludicrous. They're gonna give. They're gonna do the Nate Diaz rematch, aren't they? Or they've got to. They've got to. Or Jorge. Well, wait, fine. Ah, man. Jorge will kill him. Jorge will kill him. Um, I think I think the Diaz rematch is the, the only way to go here. We haven't got a card this weekend coming up. We've got a weekend off. Super Bowl weekend, there's Alistair Overeem taking our Alex Volkov. Unreal fight with the Frankie Edgar Cody Sandhagen matchup. A really good fight to look forward to. We're not going to break that down this week because um, we'll do it there's next also, week. Also, Knuckle Mania. That weekend, Knuckle Mania. Oh, is Paige Van Zandt fighting? Yeah. Oh, it's got rough and the... rowdy. If if we're talking about buddy the bare knuckle FC, you got a rough and rowdy thirteen. Then Billy Football fighting the baseball classic player Jose Cansenko. You don't don't bring that muck into this fold, Jimbo Slice of bare knuckle FC. Don't bring that muck in. Watch me. I don't know why. I just can't watch it. Uh, one for me. Are we going for the, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Tampa Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I think the Chiefs will win. I think they'll win outright, but I don't know if they'll cover. I don't know if they'll cover. And before we before we call it a day, even we haven't discussed the verdict. We haven't discussed the verdict. I see what you're trying to do there, K Diggy. You try to try to get get rid of it before it's over. So I haven't taken um points for each each event, although I did win all three of them, I was the top. So, in third, in third place, uh, with three three thousand three hundred eighty five points, is K Diggy. In second place, with five one hundred five, is Jimbo Slice. And then, me on ten thousand three hundred and sixty nine is the big dog. Um, so I've got it's early days. It's early days, but I've in effect got a uh, a card on on you, Jimbo. I've got I've got a, I've got a, a decent performing card on you. I can I can afford to cock up massively one week. And all I'll say to you boys is put your round picks in. Put your round picks in. <laughs> no, it's it's the freebie for watching the fights live. It's the freebie. You're you're a fool to not take them points. But um, where did it go wrong, Kadegi? Where did it go wrong? It's been it's been a rough month, and it's been a it's been a month full of it's been a lot of upsets this month. Even though I it managed to call sort of one of the biggest ones in sort of um, Poirier beating McGregor, um, I've I've relied a lot on the on the submissions, and there hasn't seemed to have been many submissions. I don't think there's been a single one. Just just having a quick think back. Um, I'm thinking that people are going to knock someone to the ground and choke the, get, put him in a real naked choke, but it's just not happening. So it's it has been it has been rough. Um, last minute changes. I had a friend who who, who talked me out of putting uh, to, uh, put, putting me against um, Wal Walry Alves. I was I was going for him, and then I changed last minute because my friend 
mentioned that this other fellow was good. Laz- Laziez, I think his name is. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I picked Alves to win that one. I picked I picked one Alves. Yeah, I, I did as well. And then last minute change. And then a last minute change on the Kiesa fight. It's, just, it's, been, it's been an embarrassment. And um, I promise to the MMA Smash Bros UK community, I'm going to be coming back strong, baby. Yeah, um, laughable scores there. An average of about uh, 1,127 a card, which is is bad. That's that is terrible. Let's not beat around the bush. But the big dog reigning supreme. Can he maintain it for the whole year? There's only one way to find out by listening to the pod and and tuning in. It's the only way to find out. So uh, yeah, really good card next week. Uh, we'll break it down as it comes. I think there's still a lot of fights to be announced for that one officially. So um, hopefully, come next week, next Thursday, whenever it is that we actually get around to doing this, we'll have a bit of a clearer idea as to who is going to be fighting. Anything more, gents, before we call it? I know. Good to be back. Good to be back after that week. Yeah. yeah. Go Chiefs. Round picks. Chiefs. Round picks. Ah, books. I want the books to win. Speak to you all next week, but gentlemen, goodbye. <laughs>